Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today I have some romance recommendations for y'all. A few weeks ago on my Instagram, I put one of those question boxes and I asked y'all to give me a trope or a specific book subgenre you're wanting a recommendation for and I will try and recommend you a book. That is going to be today's video, but I've deemed it the underrated version. So I'm going to be recommending books that are more on the underrated side. So they're books that I love that I don't feel like get enough hype or love. So I'm very excited to talk about today's books. I'm going to keep the the descriptions short and sweet because I have a lot of prompts to get through. So let's get started. The first one is a book with a caretaking scene. For this one, I'm going to go with Just a Heartbeat Away of a Car by Stone. This is an age gap single dad romance. Don't let the cutesy cover fool you also. This book is full of chili peppers. Okay, um, but I love this one so much. It's so underrated, but there is a caretaking scene in here. The heroine goes and takes care of the hero and his son. Like the hero can't take care of his sick son because he gets sick also. And so the heroine Via takes care of both of them while they're sick. And I think he takes care of her as well at a certain point in this book, but man, this one is so stinking good. <laughs> Next, I have a fake dating romance. For this one, I'm going to go with Set the Record Straight by Hannah Bonham Young. This was a book I read, I believe in December or January of this year. I read it during the wintry time, okay? Um, because this is definitely based on the cover, like a wintry read. This is also a friends to lovers romance. So our heroines in here, they grew up as best friends. They've been best friends for a while. They're both in their mid twenties, I wanna say. Anyway, they have to fake date for a certain reason and by them fake dating, they realize that oh my gosh, we have feelings for each other. Well, one of the girls has been secretly pining after her best friend for quite a while. And the other girl always thought she was straight until she has like a supposed fake kiss with her friend and realizes that was the best kiss I've ever had in my life. Maybe I'm not so straight. So <laughs> I really love this one and I hope that you do too. Y'all, so many of y'all were asking for why choose romances. Do y'all not know? I don't like those. <laughs> Give me like a Polly or an MF, MMF any day. Why choose romance that are just not my vibe, okay? But I'm gonna give you a recommendation that I did not necessarily hate, okay? This person wanted a why choose romance without sword crossing. So that means where the guys are only with the heroine, okay? Which I personally don't care for those, just my personal preference. Um, but one that I didn't necessarily hate, it was fine, it was okay, is Suffer Less by uh, K K. B. Everly. Um, the heroine in this one is an amputee and she ends up across this guy, these guys, this group of guys who travel the country on motorcycles and then the guys all get with the heroine at some point. So short and sweet. It was fine. There's nothing bad about it. I just, I don't love why choose romances. You're asking the wrong girly. Go ask, go ask like Samantha or something because it is not my vibe. Next, someone asked for a uh, female alien romances. Girl, I've been looking for those too, okay? There's another one on this list where I'll give more recommendations for that. Um, but I wasn't trying to pick a Ruby Dixon because there's like three Ruby Dixon ones and I know one of them even asked me not to recommend a Ruby one. So um, we're gonna go with two that are on my TBR. Okay, two that are on my TBR. We have uh, Hunter of the Tide by Tiffany Roberts. This is book number three in this Kraken series where the heroine is the Kraken. It looks really good. I've only read book one in this series, so I have to continue on, but I know that the heroine is the Kraken in this one. Also Forbidden Desire by Robin Lovett, which is book four in this um, Alien Romance series. I've only read up to book two, so I need to read book three and then I can get to this one, but this one looks really good too. This one takes place on like the aphrodisiac planet. Okay, so I'm looking forward to those. Hopefully you haven't read those two romances because there's not a lot. I feel like there's not a lot of alien romances where the heroine is the hair where the heroine is the alien. So I need more in my life, okay? My friend Spirit asked for a book with pregnancy, a romance book with pregnancy. For this one, I have to choose Damaged Goods by Talia Hibbert. The heroine of this book, she's in an abusive relationship and she is pregnant and she's like, I can't raise my baby with this abusive man. I'm finally leaving him. She goes to escape to a small town that she would summer vacation out with her family every weekend, every summer, there you go, every summer. Um, and there she bumps into her first like everything guy, it was her first boyfriend, her first time, like everything Samir. And this is about the two of them reconnecting and him like 
fully committing to Laura and this baby. Next, I have a Grumpy Sunshine where the heroine is really, really, really sunny. And the one that's just like the epitome <laughs> of uh, that for me um is Dear Monster Claws by Maeve Black. I know this is like a Christmassy book, okay, but I love it. The heroine is literally Cupid, like incarnate. She just wants to find love and wants everyone else to find love. And this is her romance with like Monster Santa who is grumpy and she is tasked to find his Christmas spirit again, basically his Christmas joy. That one's really fun, but if you're not into alien monster romances, I recommend um, The Wallflower Wager by Tessa Dare. The heroine in this one is a lady who lives in her big estate house. Um, she's single, but her house is full of animals and pets. Like she kind of like runs this animal sanctuary. She loves taking care of pets and animals and animals that are injured. And her next door neighbor, Gabe, is not very happy about said animals, so. That one is really cute also. Next, I have a book that has no third act breakup. For this one, I'm going to be going with one of my favorite books of January, which was Kiss My Cupcake by Helena Hunting. Blair and Ronan in here run rivaling businesses that are right next to each other. She owns like a cocktail cupcake shop and he has this like ax throwing bar. And so it's like enemies to lovers at first, like they do not care for each other, but as they get to know each other and each other's businesses, they end up falling for each other and the respective businesses. And yeah, there's no third act breakup in here. I felt like the conflict of this story was um, very prevalent to what they were going through, but they don't break up. Next, someone is wanting a book with BDSM. I don't read a lot of these, um, but one that I really did like um, was Bound to Submit by Laura Kay. This is a short novella. Um, I think this is like a whole series that takes place in this certain type of club, okay? Um, I think it's called the Blasphemy Club. And our heroine in here, she is a veteran and she's also an amputee now. She got injured in war and lost part of her arm. She's going through a lot of PTSD due to her time overseas. And she's trying to get back her old self again, like become who she actually is as a person instead of this like, pain and trauma and so she decides to go to this club to seek something that would help her out and there she comes across a man who used to help her in a certain department that this club represents and they decide to kind of like rekindle things and they end up falling for each other i really enjoyed this one someone asked for a estranged childhood friends to lovers romance i love these okay um if you want a alien romance i have broken by the horde king by zoe draven which is so far, mm, is it my favorite? I think it's my favorite book in the series. It is so good. Our heroine in here is a human on this alien planet and she gets adopted into this alien family on this alien planet. So she's the only human that lives in this village of aliens and she becomes best friends with kind of the prince of the village. And they're like best friends, they do everything together. And then when he's ready to become king, she, like years later when he's grown up, um, she kind of puts herself out there that she's developed feelings for him and he rejects her in front of everybody. And she is heartbroken. And a lot of other things happen too, where she just does not trust him anymore as a person, as a friend. And he goes off to do some like king training stuff. And it's like 10 years later, he comes back and he wants her desperately. This one's so good, it's full of angst. I love it. But if you don't want an alien romance, I recommend uh, Southern Storms by Brittany Cherry. Our hero and heroine in here were actually best friends at summer camp when they were kids. And I believe like she moves in to a home that her sister has been renovating um, after some things she's been experiencing that is kind of traumatic. They bump into each other one day because she's sitting on a bench that he made in this field. And he's like, get off of that like it's she doesn't know it but it's like a memorial for someone that he lost they don't get off on the right foot because that was their first meeting and then they finally remember that they know each other from camp when they were kids there's a lot more going into this one but this one's also full of angst and i just love britney cherry so any excuse that i can talk about her books i will someone asked for a post-apocalyptic romance i love these two for this one i'm going to go with dusk walker by tiffany roberts this one's also a cyborg romance so our heroine is a human woman humans are very they're a very small population on earth now and cyborgs mostly run the earth and our cyborg hero in here feels like he's missing something in his life he doesn't have a purpose and then one day he comes across this abandoned barn and finds this girl dancing in it 
um, and he is just totally enthralled by her. Long story short, they have to team up together to go and find her sister who is missing. And it's also kind of forbidden because if people found out that she was like with a cyborg and that he was with a human, like they would both be ostracized from their people. Like their people would ostracize them. And so there's a lot going on in this one. Next, someone asked for a Phantom of the Opera retelling. I've never read a Phantom of the Opera retelling. I'd go ask uh, Samantha from Books with Samantha because she just loves Phantom of the Opera. I do too, but I have yet to read a retelling of it. However, one of my TBR is the Forgotten Phantom. This one looks really good. I don't know much about it, but if you haven't read this one, maybe check this one out. Someone asked for a Golden Retriever hero. And I know this person loves alien romance, so I would have to go with Adiron by Ruby Dixon. Adiron in here is such the Golden Retriever hero. He is completely smitten and head over heels in love with Jade right from the moment he sees her. She's a human woman and she ends up tricking him to get on her spaceship and kind of gassing him and knocking him out to steal some stuff from him. And he is like totally in love with her when he realizes what she did. She's like, he's like, oh my gosh, this woman's amazing. She did all this stuff, like, yes. <laughs> I love him so much. He is total golden retriever energy. Someone asked for a delightfully unhinged book and I have to go with Jessica Kane. Jessica Kane's books are totally unhinged. <laughs> if you have not read a Jessica Kane yet, you need to, if you love like unhinged romances, I would have to go with If I Wouldn't Fall, As If I Wouldn't Fall by Jessica Kane. This one is bizarre wild but it's like a train wreck you're like you cannot look away i had to keep reading this our hero and heroine they're in high school and the hero has been obsessed with the heroine for years to a point where he literally gets her name tattooed on a certain area of his body before they even like talk at all. The beginning of this book starts with her car like breaking down and his mechanic shop that he works at is close by so she brings the car to the shop and that's the first time that they speak. He already has that tattoo on his body. He's already obsessed with her at this point and so there's a lot of other unhinged stuff in this book but man that was the main kicker for me. <laughs> Someone asked for an only one bed trope and I would have to go with for My Lady's Kiss by Linda Needham, the one bed trope in here is absolutely iconic to me. It's one of my favorite scenes ever in a book. This historical romance is a lot going on, but at one instance of this book, the hero like kidnaps the heroine and keeps her in this castle that he lives in and to make sure she doesn't run away from him because she's escaped a few times. He makes her strip down, throw her clothes out the window so that Hopefully she's too embarrassed to run away naked because she has no clothes in this room and has her sleep in the bed with him. There's also only one bed in the room and um, makes her braid her hair and he holds it in his fist while they're sleeping next to each other so that she doesn't run away. That is just everything to me. <laughs> Someone asked for a hero who worships the heroine. For this one, I have to go with an alien romance because this is like chocked full in alien romances for sure. This one would be Wed to the Alien Warlord by January Bell. The heroine doesn't know that she's marrying the hero in this ceremony that's going on with her and her other crewmates. She just thinks it's a welcoming ceremony for her people, but in actuality, they're all getting married because she doesn't understand what's going on. There's, she doesn't understand the language. There's no like language chip translator thing. And so uh, she realizes that she's married to this man, like after they're already married. Um, and the hero just wants everything for her. He's like, what can I do to convince you to like stay my wife and to be mine? Like he worships the ground that she walks on. Someone asked for a poly romance. And for this one, I have to go with an underrated Ruby Dixon, okay? Um, this is Double Dare You. And um, this is the last book in her Motorcycle Club series. However, it's the only book in the series that's M-M-F. So the guys are also together in this book. Um, all the other books are M-F-M in this series. So if you want like M-F-M books, check the other books in the series out. But I really like this one. This one's my favorite in the series because it's M-M-F. Okay. The two guys that are in the situation, they are new motorcycle club partners in this motorcycle club. And they are tasked to go and rescue this girl who has been kidnapped and put in this second ring okay and they're going to save her and bring her home with them and then feelings arise between all of them someone asked for a royalty romance and i cannot go wrong with the karina halley book i would have to go with the wild air i think that's one of the more underrated books in this series this is a um like forced not forced marriage like a marriage alliance romance 
and the two of them do not want to get married to one another. Like he's a big playboy and she is more straight laced. Um, but they end up obviously falling in love with each other. I really like this one. It's really underrated because I feel like a lot of people only read a Nordic King in this series or book one, which is the Swedish Prince. And not a lot of people read book two, but book two is really good. But if you haven't read the other books in the series, obviously read that one also. Ollie is crying. Hello. I guess you're going to sit in my lap for the rest of this, huh? Okay. <laughs> Someone asked for a non-binary main character. I actually haven't read a romance with a non-binary main character. That's definitely something I need to look into because someone wrote that as a prompt and I was like, oh my gosh, I haven't read one of those yet. Um, and so I was trying to find an underrated one because I do know, oh, I do know that there are, um, like uh traditionally published books i believe like romance books that have non-binary non-binary main characters i think one recently was a book of the month book if i'm not mistaken um so i tried to look on ku and i found this one this one's called upcycle my heart um so if you haven't seen this one um i recommend picking it up but i'm really disappointed that when i was looking up books like non-binary romance books like not a lot of books came up there were books that came up that uh featured transgender main characters but i wanted to look for specifically non-binary because this person asked for non-binary and there weren't a lot to choose from unfortunately most of them were ya um so this is definitely something i want to look into more so leave your recommendations down below if you have any recommendations for me please and obviously for the person who asked for the recommendation and for other people out there too like more people need to read these types of books. Someone asked for an alien or monster romance with an alien or monster. That's the woman. That's not a Ruby Dixon book, okay? I totally get you. So for this one, I have Taken to Varaxia by Elizabeth Stevens. The heroine and hero are both aliens in here. The heroine is this like hybrid. So she's half red alien creature and half human. She does grow up with humans and um, she's half human. So there is that part of her, but she also has these alien qualities to her as well. She has red skin she has a tail that has like a mind of its own um so i really love this one and i think other books in the series would feature um alien halo alien heroines too so be sure to check out elizabeth stevens books someone asked for a spicy holiday romance so i don't know if they were just looking for like christmas holiday romances or like any holiday. So for Valentine's Day, I really did love Sweet Valentine. That one was a really good celebrity romance, but they don't know that the other person's a celebrity when they're together. Like have this happenstance moment at a hotel in Val during Valentine's Day, and they have this one night situation that turns into more. I really like this one. It's really spicy, okay? And then for like Christmassy time, I have Grave Tidings. This one is a very short, under 100 pages novella that deals a lot with like ropes and bondage and stuff so yeah the heroine gets like punished by Krampus on Christmas Eve it's fun someone asked for a romance where a billionaire romance but she's the billionaire I realized I hadn't read one of these either and so one that I looked up that looks good is Lush Money this one looks really good I think she hires him to fake date her or something it looks really good so i have to put that on my tbr i was then asked to recommend a soccer romance and i have to go with everything for you by chloe lee's obviously and book one in the series also has soccer in it and then the book that's about to come out i know has soccer in it also so um this is an mm romance age gap i shout loud and proud about this book all the time so this one's not necessarily underrated for me but any chance that I get to recommend this book, I will, because I think it is fantastic. That was a big yawn. Someone then asked for a road trip romance, and I know it was you with Spatia, okay? And she knows I don't like road trip romances, so I think she's messing with me, okay? Um, so one contemporary one that I loved was On the Way to You by Candy Steiner. Um, this one was fun but very emotional and heavy at times because it deals with uh, suicide and depression. So please be aware of that. Um, but if you want a historical, let me grab it. I have A Week to Be Wicked by Tessa Dare. This one was so good. Um, the hero and the heroine go on a road trip to this like fossil convention thing that's happening. Um, but he is scared of carriages. Um, because his parents and himself, I think, were in a carriage accident and his parents ended up dying. And so they have to come up with unique ways to travel across the country to get to the convention on time. Um, and oh, this bun is full of banter and hilarity. I love it so much. Someone asked for, in quotes, that's my wife slash husband vibes. <laughs> I love like a possessive, possessive character who like is so in love with their spouse. Like anyone touches them you're dead so um this one i have to go with stolen touches by neva altaj 
he literally would unalive anyone who touched his wife. There was even a point where he puts like a GPS on her wrist so he can know where she is 24 seven and make sure she's like okay and safe 24 seven. And there might be, even be a line in here where he says something like that and it was everything. Someone asked for period caretaking. I do have a shelf on my Goodreads for a period rep. I only have a few books on there so I can't remember if it's period caretaking but this book does have like period representation in it, claimed by the Horde King by Zoe Draven. I'm pretty sure there's period caretaking in this one, but I can't remember like specifically. Um, if not this one, um, this book by A.G. Wild, I think has it too. Um, I just can't remember if there's period caretaking specifically, but there is period rep in both of these books. Um, but this one is one that I I'm pretty sure it's in there. This is book two in the Horde Kings of Drakkar series. The heroine in here ends up killing an animal on this planet. And that's like a big no-no for the aliens who live there that are native to the planet. And so the Horde King of this certain group ends up tracking her down and wanting her to pay for what she's done. And he ends up taking her back to the village and he ends up falling in love with her, even though he should not. I know this is book two in the series, but I think you can read it as a standalone if you want to. Um, but the period rep in here I thought was really good. I can't remember though if there was specific period caretaking. My memory, I'm so sorry, is like shot. Someone asked for, um, I love her, but she's with someone else. I know this was Tori who asked for this and I know she's already read this book. So bear with me, Tori. I'll give you like a second option in a second. But the book that perfectly fits this trope is Tempt Me at Twilight by Lisa Kleypas. And I know she gave this book five stars because this one, it does have that trope. Poppy in here is totally like, thinks she's in love with this other guy, but then Harry ends up meeting her and is like, so that woman's gonna be mine and I'm gonna do everything and sabotage her relationship to make her my wife instead. And that's what happens. So that's the embodiment of this book. One that I think doesn't fully fit this book because I haven't read anything as similar to that trope as Tempt Me at Twilight. I have Accidentally Compromising the Duke by Stacey Reed. This one, the heroine thinks that she will be able to fall in love. She has feelings for this guy. And so she is set to marry this man she doesn't want to marry. And so she ends up putting on this scheme with her best friend to try and have her marry this guy she does like. So she's gonna get ruined with him, like go into his room at night, stage this whole thing and she'll be ruined with him. And so her parents will force her to marry the guy that she wants to marry. But she ends up walking into this Duke's room instead and gets ruined by him instead. And things do not go according to plan and she has to marry this single dad duke she's not like full on in love with the guy that she was set to ruin herself with at first um but she did care for him at some point but it's not like this book because this one's like totally the embodiment of that prompt so i'm sorry tori but i know you love this one so much someone asked for a language barrier romance i have to go with fall by claire kent this is a recent read of mine that i just loved it's an alien romance that gives me a lot of vibes of transcendence by shay savage it's like caveman-esque. It is so good. And she has to like learn his language and it takes a while. But I thought this one was so beautiful. I love it. Someone asked for a forbidden romance and an underrated one for that is this novella. This is Between Dawn and Dusk by Jamie Schlosser. This is book number 5.5. Point five in this fantasy romance series. This is rivaling families with fated mates. So in this fantasy realm, the way you know that you've met your fated mate is when you meet eyes for the first time. You can like instantly like zing know that this is your fate to mate. Zella and Kirth are from like rivaling families. I think she's from the day court and he's from the night court and her dad like hates his court um, but they end up meeting in like an alliance situation like an alliance meeting and uh, they figure out that they're mates and she and goes and tells her father and her father is pissed ends up locking her in a tower to make sure like it doesn't happen like he's like my daughter will not be mates with a guy from the night realm like no. But then Kier, the hero, ends up swooping in and saving the day and saving his fated mate. And it is so good. I love a good rivaling families romance, especially in fantasy romance. Love it. Next, I have a why choose romance. Again, why y'all? Do you not know me? I don't. I don't do why choose romances. One that was okay. I gave up reading the series. Okay. But the first two were fine. They were good. Okay. This is the va their vampire Queen's series. The heroine in this one realizes that she's a vampire and she has, each book in the series has like more and more people join her like horde of men. 
and like her it's called her blood I think where she's able to like feed off of people and the more guys she's in a relationship with and is able to like feed off the stronger vampire queen she'll be so it was entertaining it just got boring to me like after like book three like it felt very repetitive but if you haven't read this one yet go ahead you're just asking the wrong person for my choose romance y'all I don't do them they're not my vibe give me a poly any day I'll do it why choose not so much I don't know why like one woman with like five men and the men aren't with each other sounds just so boring to me <laughs> Someone asked for a grumpy sunshine monster romance. Definitely the Koi Master by Amanda Milo. The hero in here is the alien, obviously, and the heroine works on this core with him to build this alien building on this alien spaceship. And he ends up very reluctantly falling in love with this human woman. He doesn't like humans. He thinks they're boring, lazy, keeps complaining all day long. But once he meets Isla, like, all bets are off. Like he is smitten for her, even though he does not want to be. And the last prompt, someone asked for a marriage of convenience romance. An underrated one that I really liked is Like You Love Me by Adriana Locke. These two were childhood friends and the two of them have to get married so they can get money. <laughs> so they can get money for certain instances. I think he gets like an inheritance if he marries her and vice versa. No, he needs to be married so he looks good for his respective boss that he's gonna like meet soon. He really wants to be like this vet at this specific like very high commodity vet place, okay? Um, and I think this guy's like a family man kind of. So he wants to like show that he is very invested in family. And I think she gets an inheritance if she gets married and she owns this B&B. &B. Um, and so this is a friends to lovers romance. They are friends, they get married and it turns into lovers. It was really cute and really sweet. And I hope you love it. Anyways, there you have it. Those were some underrated romance recommendations for you. Please let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. And if you asked any of these uh, like prompts for me and you already read the book that I recommended, please let me know in the comments and I'll try and get you a different recommendation because that's what I wanted out of this video. I hope you got a book recommendation out of it. And if not, please let me know. Like I want to recommend something to you. Also leave your recommendations for any of these prompts down below. I would love it. And I bet the people who asked would love that as well. If you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me the wave emoji in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank you all so, so much for watching. And we'll see y'all soon in my next one. Bye.